The aim of this video is to give a demonstration of the American three-valve method for testing reduced pressure zone backflow preventers. It is intended as a guide only, and if you have any queries, then please feel free to contact either WTI Training Group or Watts UK. Firstly, inspect the device and surrounding installation for any signs of damage or indications that it may have been tampered with. Also look to see if the discharge port is running or there are signs that it has been. Ensure that the installation complies with the latest version of the installation guidance note and in particular that the clearances around the device are correct. Next, ensure that the serial number on the valve matches the device to be tested and that permission has been given to interrupt supply of water to the process. Ensure that the test kit is in calibration and that all the bypass needle valves are open. The test cocks are numbered from 1 to 3 across the device, starting with the first zone. Test cock 1, test cock 2, test cock 3. Ignore the test point located on the first isolating valve if present. The object of flushing is to remove any debris which may become lodged in the test kit and require the kit to be overhauled. It is important that the drain port is not opened during the test and care should be taken particularly when flushing the device. Slowly open test cock 3 and leave running. Gently open test cock 1 and then close once all air has been expelled and there is a steady flow. Repeat for test cock 2. And then close test cock 3. The test kit has three control valves and corresponding hoses. From left to right, they are the high side, low side, and finally the bypass. Install an adapter to each test cock, ensuring that they are leak free. Connect the high side hose on the test kit to test cock 1 and ensure a tight connection. Connect the low side hose to test cock 2. and then slowly open test cock 2, allowing water to flow through the test kit and via the bypass hose to waste. Open test cock 1 slowly, ensuring that the discharge valve does not open. Once all the air has been vented via the bypass hose, close the high side control valve. Then close the low side control valve and finally the bypass control valve. The kit is now ready to perform the test, so close the downstream isolating valve. If the differential pressure gauge gives a steady reading, which is greater than zero, then it can be assumed that the first check valve is closed tight. Open high side control valve and then the low side control valve a maximum of a quarter turn. A hand should be placed under the drain port and a careful eye kept on the differential pressure gauge. When a discharge of water is felt in the hand, observe the reading on the gauge and record. This is the opening point of the relief valve and must be a minimum of 0.14 bar. Now close all needle valves on the test kit. Gently open both the high side and bypass control valves to establish a flow through the test kit. Then close the bypass control valve to give a slight trickle from the bypass hose. Next, open test cock 3 to give a slight trickle and connect the bypass hose to test cock 3. This is termed a wet connection and is important to ensure that no air enters the test kit. Once the connection is made, fully open both test cock 3 and the bypass control valve. To compensate for any seat compression, loosen and tighten hose on test cock 2.
If gauge remains steady, then the second check valve is holding tight and should be recorded. Now observe the differential pressure gauge reading and record the figure. This is the head loss across the first valve. It is important to ensure that the buffer, which is the difference between opening point of relief and the head loss across the first check, is greater than 0.2 bar. Next, close all needle valves on the test kit. Close all test cocks. and disconnect all the hoses from the device. Ensure that all control valves on the test kit are open and then connect the high side hose to test cock 2 and the low side hose to test cock number 3. Open test cocks 2 and 3. Then close the high side control valve once all the air has been expelled and then slowly close the low side control valve. Now observe the differential pressure gauge and record. This is the head loss across the second check valve. The test is now complete and the device can now be returned to use provided it is functioning correctly. Remember to open the downstream isolating valve slowly and re-establish the flow. Then close all the test cocks, open all control valves and remove the test kit and adapters. If the device has failed any of the tests, then it will require maintenance to rectify the problem. This is not covered by this video and should be undertaken by a qualified person. Only manufacturer approved spares should be used and a suitable lubricant as required. If you have any queries, please refer to the manufacturer of the valve for guidance.